Hello students today we will start a new chapter reproduction all organisms start their life from infants isn't it yes they undergo various stages of life and development and then ultimately die but does this mean that all living organisms on this planet will die and there will be no life on this planet no this is because today's organisms will give rise to new organisms of their type and life will continue this process of continuing the life on earth is called reproduction so let me ask you some basic questions what is reproduction and why do organisms need to reproduce let us answer the first question reproduction means to reproduce it is very evident reproduction is a biological process by which an organism reproduces an offspring who is biologically similar to itself reproduction enables and ensures the continuity of species generation after generation it is the main feature of life on earth for its existence now the next question is why do organisms reproduce since reproduction is not necessary to maintain the life of an individual organism unlike other essential life processes such as nutrition respiration or excretion so then why do we reproduce in fact if an individual organism creates more individuals by reproduction a lot of its energy gets spent in the process so then why should an individual organism waste so much of energy on a process which is not needed to stay alive the answer is no doubt reproduction is not essential for staying alive but it is very essential or necessary to maintain the continuity of the species reproduction ensures that during the process one generation of living organisms produces the next generation it also plays an important role in evolution by transmitting variations from one parents to the offspring reproduction is also the means of increasing the population of a given species and in turn makes them more noticeable and sustainable and what is this exactly let's understand think that if there were to be only one non reproducing member of a particular species it is doubtful that we would have noticed its existence it is the large numbers of organisms belonging to that species that bring them to our notice so we can say that even though reproduction is not an important life process it preserves a species and maintains the continuity of that species but then how do we know that two individuals belong to the same species or not usually we say that if organisms look similar to each other and are capable of breeding and producing fertile offspring they are of the same species and do organisms create exact copies of themselves or do they reproduce exactly identical organisms or organisms different from each other students pause the video and can you answer this by just your observational skills i'm sure you'll be able to do that now to answer this question first observe some of these pictures first one is of hydra second is of planaria third we can see there are ants and fourth and fifth pictures is of cats and dogs and monkey and the last one is of human family look at this pictures of lower group of animals out of these they have simple body designs in all these animals offsprings are identical to their parents and also to each other did you observe yes this is because they reproduce asexually in asexual reproduction only one parent is required to produce offspring and thus the offsprings are like clones to the parents and to each other also 
Now observe these pictures of monkeys or cats or dogs or humans. Do they produce exact copies of themselves? The answer is no. Although they resemble their parents in structure, they are not exactly like them. Now look at this family in the picture. The child in this picture resembles to his parents but is not exactly like them. This is because a child inherits some characteristics and some variations from both the parents. Half of the traits are inherited from mother and half of them from father. And how do they do that? Yes, with the help of gametes. Gametes are special reproductive cells that pass on the traits from both the parents. The mother produces a female gamete ova and the father produces a male gamete sperm. The fusion of both these gametes leads to the production of new individual. This kind of reproduction is called sexual reproduction. And during the process, along with the parental characteristics, variations are also passed on to the child. So now there is a question, is asexual reproduction better than sexual reproduction or vice versa? Students, sexual reproduction is considered better than asexual reproduction. In asexual reproduction, the offspring is an exact copy of the parent. Since only one parent is involved in the process, there is no variation in the child and they have fewer chances to adapt to different and changing environments. On the contrary, sexual reproduction involves two parents and the genetic transfer of both parents to the offspring. There are also variations in the genes and they can help to adapt to different environmental conditions. And thus we can say that sexual reproduction for better survival and adaptability as compared to asexual reproduction. So now we know that organisms look similar or different because of their body designs which are either similar or different. And these body designs are inherited from their parents during the process of reproduction. And for that, the blueprints for these body designs should be similar or different. In class 9, we have learned that chromosomes in the nucleus of a cell contains these blueprints of the body designs and that all organisms inherit them during cell division that takes place while reproduction. Thus, reproduction at its most basic level will involve making copies of blueprints that is DNA of the body design or chromosomes that contain this DNA of the body design. But how do cells copy DNA or make new chromosomes and form new similar kind of cells? Think and try to find an answer or we will answer it in our next video.